take us, let's go ahead and begin. So raise your hand if you want to learn how to build software for cheap. All right, everybody? All right, can we get a whoop? Ooh. All right, I know it's 9 a.m. on a Saturday or 9.30, but uh, let's get some excitement going. Uh, so this is a $300 software startup. So this is basically the methodology that I've learned after spending about $15,000 in software offshoring costs. So now I've figured out how to do things inexpensively, and I don't spend thousands of dollars on development anymore. So just a little bit about me. I am an MBA, I'm a technologist, an entrepreneur, and an author. My company is Atlas Innovations. Um, I've been in technology for 18 years. I started as a developer and moved into leadership roles, so until recently, I haven't coded in a long time, but recently that's changed thanks to my new methodology. I'm also a native Arizona, born, raised, and educated here with both a global business background at ASU and in an MBA from U of A, which means I get to like both schools, so really fork and go cats. So, uh, I am an Atlas Shrugged super fan, so if you've never read the book, I highly recommend it. I'm also a CEI incubator client, and I've written four books this year. Uh, the first one was a $6,000 software startup, which I thought was a huge accomplishment after coming from corporate IT management and spending <laughs> six figures on projects, so to launch something for less than $6,000 was a huge accomplishment. Well, recently I've learned how to do it for less. Um, in addition to that, I wrote the uh, Quick Start Guide for Axure, which is a UI prototyping tool that is super stupid awesome, and the Quick Start Guide to Zendesk, and in addition to that, I've also written a book on learning self-service. Can I ask how you publish those books? Um, I publish them through Amazon. And then I also have, uh, some of them are also on CreateSpace, so you can print out a physical copy as well. Right. So I have launched three startups this year. Uh, the first one was trainasyougo.com. The second is velocityhiring.com. And the third is learnos.com. So trainasyougo.com is a help, desk, a help system that's integrated with your application. So as you go through the application, it detects what page you're on and displays context-sensitive help information. Uh, that cost me $6,000, which was kind of the foundation for my book and my process. The second one was VelocityHiring.com, which is an interview screening solution. Essentially, how it works is you create a job in my system. Um, you can do a phone screening, so somebody enters in pre-screening questions. You can do a phone screening uh, on them and you can decide which candidates you hate and which ones you like. Basically, hate them, hate them, like them, hate them, and it optimizes your time. Um, that's part of the solution that we're gonna cover today because I built out a mobile video client where you can actually pre-screen people through video and I'm working on that right now. And then the third one, which was kind of the genius of all of this, was uh, Larinos.com, which is a mobile e-learning solution which cost me $1,000 because I did expensive hosting. Had I not done that, it would have cost less than $1,000. Is that misspelled or that's the way it's spelled? L-A-E? That, that's how I spelled it, yeah. Okay. Yep. Lernos was Learn. taken, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so just some of the lessons that I've learned this year in terms of kind of launching products and, um, and my entrepreneurial journey. Um, if you build it, they don't necessarily come. It's very hard to get customers, which is why I launched Lean. Social media marketing is very hard, so that's part of what I'm expecting to get out of today's sessions, is learning a little bit more on how to do that better. Um, I've had about $50 million ideas this year, and none of them I've sold for a million dollars, so. <laughs> um, advertising is expensive. It's very hard to compete, and ideas are easy finishing is hard. So once you kind of turn on that entrepreneurial switch, it's kind of like, oh, I can build that, and I can build that, and I can build that. But uh, it takes some discipline to be focused and finish. So, um, well, but. What do you consider finish? I mean, what, what, I guess. Finish, well, you're never yeah, finished you're never in finished. software. Um, and if something's successful, then you're really never finished. Um, <laughs> or if you are finished, then that's either super good or super bad. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, um, 
but finishing kind of the initial launch because it's very easy to be, oh, here's something bright and shiny over here, bright and shiny over here, oh, another bright and shiny idea. I could do that in like two weeks. Um, but uh, I take uh, I take uh, courage from Winston Churchill. So success is not final, failure is not fatal, and it's courage to, to continue to counts. So some of the things that I've come to find out over kind of my 18-year technology career. So it's easier than ever to compete. So with just a few hundred dollars and some blood, sweat, and tears, you can actually represent yourself as a million-dollar company. You know, you don't have to do what people had to do. You don't have to buy servers anymore. You don't have to buy infrastructure. You can do a lot of the things yourself these days, which, you know, 10 years ago in my career, that was not true. So you know, today you can compete on a video level through YouTube and Vimeo, and that doesn't cost you anything other than having a phone to upload your videos from. Uh, in terms of mobile, you can now build your own mobile solutions that's $0 to start. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the one that I use that is super insanely awesome. Uh, in terms of a website, you know, it's 60, $50 to $60 for a template, eight to twenty dollars a month for hosting so it's very inexpensive to set up and then in terms of resources there's so many resources that are free that are everywhere um, it's it's uh, so much information you'll never get through it. in terms of kind of my favorite things um, you know over the course of the past year I've really found some great resources so LastPass offers free password storage, so as you're setting up all these websites and things, just use it and you'll be able to remember and create secure passwords. Um, I do use Infusionsoft for my CRM products and affiliates and automation. Is it, it is expensive to launch, um, but it is awesome. Um, I do use Elance for hiring contractors when I need them, um, and I've been able to do some really great fixed bid projects. Uh, with contractors there, so able to limit my costs on my software development when I need it. Uh, Google Analytics gives you free website tracking, so you know it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, I'm currently using Bluehost as my favorite hosting provider. Um, I was on Hostgator, but they're slow. So, and then HubSpot. If you subscribe to their newsletter, they give you a ton of marketing information, and it's free. So, um, so these are my four go-to tools in terms of building my solutions. So for WordPress, I use that to create my work, my website. Um, it has professional themes, free plugins. It costs five to twenty dollars a month to host it, and it's basically one to five days to set it up. The hardest part of setting it up is really creating your marketing content. My mobile solution that I use is called AppRead.io, and it took me about, I want to say, 100 hours of research and searching to find it, but there's no better mobile apps building solution out on the market, because um, I've looked, so I'm sorry to steal the thunder on somebody who's speaking later today on, on mobile app solutions. This is, this is awesome. Um, it actually compiles your code into iOS and Android format, so it gives you the source code for you. They have really tremendous support. Um, like if you go to their website, they actually give you source code on how to do things, which is like I, I have never seen in my career. Um, and then once you get past the free trial period, it's about $45 a month, depending on the number of projects that you're creating. Um, I've been able to build a solution in less than 10 days. My first solution took me about, I want to say about a month to get it done. Um, and then PayPal is very easy for processing payments. They've got low fees and then that's about $5 a month. And then my favorite integration solution is called Zapier and that one is $15 a month. And it basically integrates everything. So it takes about an hour to set up. Um, and what, basic, what Zapier does is it actually takes data from different places and puts it different spots. And I'll show you an example of how I'm using it in a little bit. In terms of the budget of what to expect, so you've got your website costs. I can't even read that. 
Um, and then essentially what I do is I create, I have my services here, and then I use appri.io in order to connect this to this to the custom tables I created in my WordPress backend. So does that make sense? Okay. All right, so submitting your app, so also known as Apple is a pain in the, you know what? Um, so what I learned is that, uh, first of all, you have to have a Mac in order to generate keys. There's a, there is a, uh, a, a YouTube video on how to do it with a Windows machine, but it looked scary and complex, so I skipped that and just used my Mac. You need to create four different keys, which I didn't know, so I was creating, was using the same keys for the first three items. So you need a separate key for development. You need a separate key to generate push notifications for your phone, which is the pop-ups that happen. Um, provision, you need a key for provisioning, which is the devices that it take, that you're allowed to install your app on while it's in development. Um, and then also for your production release that says, yes, everybody can use this. For Google, it's super easy. Uh, you just sign up for your $25 license, uh, create an API key, create your app, or create your project, uh, create your API key, and then turn on push notifications, and it's one key, and it's easy. Um, in terms of the Apple submission, you have to generate keys before you can test it on your phone. And the Apple submission process is pretty hard to get through, so expect your app to be uh, rejected the first time, and it takes several weeks for your app to be approved. So they have a very stringent process in terms of what they approve. Um, in terms of Google Play, it's easy to install. You just scan your QR code, and it's good, and you submit it, and it's live within a few hours. So to Google, to Apple. <laughs> All right, so here's here's the application that I'm going to cover and kind of how it works. So so I had built this with my six thousand dollar startup mentality before I knew about all of these tools. Otherwise, I would have done something different. But it's the more interesting of the two apps that I have. So essentially, what I'm doing is on my WordPress website, I have my customer registration. I use Infusionsoft to capture the customer information and the payment information. Uh, you can do this through PayPal um, and not pay for Infusionsoft, but I like Infusionsoft. Um, I use Zapier to get the data, the new customer record from Infusionsoft, and I have that create a new record in the MySQL table. Um, I have a C-Sharp MySQL website where um, that's used to display, to create jobs and to display candidates. So that's my back-end website for this solution. Again, when I started this project six months ago, I, I would have done this differently. Um, I could have done this all in WordPress as opposed to doing a C-Sharp website, but uh, I actually paid for this piece. Um, and essentially, you know, it creates an account. I have a scheduled job that creates the account uh, where you can add jobs and review applications. Um, and then I have my Appery.io mobile solution where people can, well, this is blurry. Um, basically, people can, they can do video interviews through my mobile solution. Um, and then uh, people who are using my solution can actually pre-screen people in the mobile app. So they can see all the candidates and they can update data. Um, and then from here, I actually did PHP services that read and update my C Sharp database. So I have like three different servers talking together. Um, and then from there, it I have my MySQL database that gets the that reads the data from MySQL and sends it back to my mobile app. Um, and then on my WordPress website, um, I'm putting in a plugin that will allow people to upload video, and I'm going to take that and put that over into my MySQL, my C Sharp, and my SQL website. So that's the overview. So any questions on it? I know it's a lot. Right. So how long did it take? Um, for this one, uh, the C Sharp part took 
from June 15th to October, so I offshored that piece um, for this website because this is a, for the mobile solution because this is the second mobile solution. Um, I'm about halfway done. I haven't done uh, the uh, authentication to my website yet, so that right now is hard coded, but I'm 80% of the way done and it took me five days. So, where are you storing all the videos? I'm still, right now, I'm storing them on my WordPress website. My team is working on building a service for me to push my videos there. So it's kind of a quick proof of concept, and then I can have them build out the service. So I wanted to test it out to make sure it was going to work on the mobile side before I paid them to go um, build a service. So. Well, what's been like your interaction with the offshore, um, I guess, of the developers or uh -huh. the so I have an awesome book, and you guys can have it for free if you want. Uh, I'll have some promotional, uh, some information at the end. Uh, basically, my process is I create full specifications for the offshore team that's screen by screen um, that is exactly what they need to do. So I gave them about, I'm going to say, 75 pages of documentation on how the system was supposed to work. and. Um, and they come back to me every couple weeks and say, okay, we're ready for you to test now. I send them the list of issues that I found, and then they go fix them, and they say, okay, we're ready to test again. So I found a really great company that I've worked with uh, in terms of offshoring. Um, I've done other projects with offshore companies before, and it's not always like that, but kind of, but what I've done in terms of my projects is I now do fixed bid projects where you know, I give you 75 pages of documentation so you know exactly what you need to build. Um, you give me a fixed fee of what it's gonna take to go build it, and then from there, the variable is time, right? So depending on how closely you manage the team, you can speed up that process. Um, you can give people incentives to say, hey, if you finish this early, I'll give you a $2,000 bonus or whatever. Um, but uh, it's, uh, but, but my experience with this company has been really, really great. So. And, and did you vet them first before you sent the 75 page, like to trust them enough to? So this is actually what I learned from my first startup, because what I did was I went on Elance and I gave out my, I wanna say that project was about 90 pages of documentation. So um, I gave it out up front and what happened was uh, people had <coughs> taken my documentation and they were subcontracting my project on Elance. So I'm expecting to pay $5,000 to $7,000 to go build this product, and they were bidding at it out for two to $3,000. And somebody, somebody had pointed out, hey, is this your project? And I said, well, yes it is, because they copied my description. So, so what I learned from that exercise is I asked uh, the company about uh, 10 questions. I get their bid. I just give them a high-level description of it's 10 screens. Here's the summary of the application. I have full specifications, so if so, you can review it before we finalize the bid. But what I do is I get a high-level estimate. I rank the companies based off of uh, the team that they're providing. Do they provide QA or not? Um, and what their rate is. I kind of whack off the top top companies and the bottom companies because I don't think you know you're not going to build my product. You know, it's just not, it's not reasonable to have 20 screens done for $2,000. That's kind of my, my viewpoint. So I w whack off the top and the bottom, rank them based off of what type of support they offer, what's their post-implementation support. Like if I have an issue 30 days down the road, are they still going to continue to support me? Um, and, then, uh, and then basically picked out one. So. How many companies have you gotten feedback from or, or response from? Response from in terms of what? All of your bid. Um, my first project, I got I want to say about forty companies on really? Elance okay. to respond to it. Yeah, wow. so it was kind of a pain to go through. Right. But and then I would force people to sign NDAs and things like that, but still didn't stop a company from reposting my job. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And all that's in your book. Like the whole process that that whole thing is in my book. Okay. So. And then my interview questions are in there too. So. <laughs> All right. So um, 
In terms of my WordPress website, so I'm using PHP to save to a database. Um, on my Larynos website, I actually, I'm just saving it to my WordPress database. So um, this one, but in terms of velocity hiring, I've actually built out 13 services. Um, so I have a service to get the account info, get the applications, or the, get the applicants, update the applicant, save a video, save the applicant information, get the questions, uh, get uh, the job, get the open jobs, get videos, phone answers, skills, um, get an applicant by their specific ID, get applicants by their job ID, and uh, something else. I'm missing about four services. Like I said, this is kind of a work in progress. I'm 80 percent done. So here's kind of the example PHP of the services side. Um, I've got server name, username, and password. I'm connecting to my MySQL database, which is on my .NET site. I have a uh, MySQL stored procedure that gets the information, and I'm just passing in the account ID. And then I have one magic line of code that outputs it into JSON format. And this is what JSON format looks like here. Um, it basically, it does a little funky on the PHP side. It looks much better in the SQL side, which I'll, in the WordPress SQL side, which I'll show you in a little bit. But, because um, it's duplicating the data here, but I'm like, no, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, it's got the account ID, name, membership ID, billable amount, the maximum number of calls that they can do, um, the account uh, notification email, the IVR number, company name, calls available, um, calls completed, and then I think there is uh, some sort of date. Um, for the SQL side, which is what I'm using for Larynos, all I did was I put in my SQL statement into my, um, into the plugin. And then here's how it returns. So it's basically you know, two lines of code, and it pulls back. Uh, this is for uh, subscribing to a specific e-learning channel, so it'll send a push notification. Um, so it's showing me the ID, when it was created, modified, which subscription days you have, how they want it delivered, whether it's your mobile or email or both, their delivery time, their user ID, their channel ID, which is the actual post ID in WordPress, and then the, whatever current episode they are on for that specific um, for that specific e-learning module. Um, so uh, I can't actually show you the well, I can kind of show you the app in action, but uh, it's going to be small, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a reflector. Uh, but this thing does not have a reflector. So, um, so, so is it still, is it out? It's not on, it's, uh, this one is about 80% done, so okay. it's not it's up. Not I up. have uh, Larynos, which is on Google Play, and it's going through the Apple submission process now. So essentially, um, you know, actually I can do this kind of. I can show you some of the pieces in appery.io. Uh, all right. So this is appery.io, and um, let me go ahead and just uh, hit the test button so it shows you the full screen. So basically, this is the test console uh, within the appery.io mobile uh, building solution. Um, it lets you change the resolution on it. Uh, you can actually re remove the frame. It, you can also compile it as well, and it will show up on your phone. Um, I didn't build in the login piece yet. That's one of the pieces that I am um, still waiting on for my, cert, my uh, web company to go build out for me. But uh, essentially what this is, this is a list of jobs that I've created through my website. Um, from here, you can actually see that uh, multiple people have, these are the people who have interviewed. Um, I also have a screen that shows you new applicants um, who have recently applied. I have this thing, I have an interview screen, so this isn't going to work on the, um, on the website, but it does work on the mobile app. 
because uh, it uses native code in order to do it. But basically what it allows you to do is you can, um, it's basically a built-in function to allow people at a job fair to get candidates and interview them on the spot. So people would enter in their first name, last name, phone, and email, um, select their job that they're interested in, and then from there, they can see the questions for that specific job. Click on this uh, icon, and it launches a recording on your mobile phone. <coughs> it records the answer, saves it to the database, and then um, and then you submit your application, and you're done. So, um, and let's see. And then the other part too that I have built out is you can also update candidates as well. So you can change their status. Uh, you can uh, review, change their the rating of their functionality. Um, and then you can also view their video. So the video unfortunately doesn't work on the mobile app, but it actually, or on the web app, but it does work on the, uh, on the mobile app. So. So just a quick demo of the functionality. And then I'm going to show you how Appery.io works, um, which is what I'm using in order to build this awesome solution. So um, when you start out with Appery.io, uh, they give you basically one page, which is their start screen. Um, this is what I have my login on. Um, it basically allows you to drag and drop the controls onto the page. Um, and then it's got this thing called events. So on the login event, you click on the, the, uh, the control. You can actually change different items about it. You can add icons to it. They've got some limited functionality, but you can actually modify the, um, the properties by entering in different classes. So. If you know a little bit of uh, CSS, you can actually change it pretty significantly. They give you different themes out of the box that you can use. Uh, so I think this is a jQuery mobile theme that uh, you know you basically pick a drop down and pick your theme. Um, in terms of the events, uh, you can actually it's very easy to create events. So you can uh, it uses. Uh, something called local storage, where it actually stores it within your phone from page to page to set different variables as you're going through. Um, and in this scenario, right now I just have it hard-coded to, um, to set an account ID to a specific value, and then I navigate to my job list page. Um, when I navigate to my job list page, There's a number of services that I'm calling. So um, there's a load event that runs when this page is loaded that calls this service called the REST Service 1. There's a data tab where you can actually add different data sources. So when I talked about the 13 services that I have, it's all set up within this system. Um, and then from there, basically what I do is it does mapping in order to pass in the parameters. So it's pretty easy. Uh, you just drag and drop your account ID. So I grabbed this from storage, uh, but you can also pull, pull different elements from the page as well. Um, so in this scenario, I had stored the account ID in my local storage, um, and I'm passing that into my service to get the information for that specific account ID. Um, and then when I return, so the return call that says here's your data through JSON, um, it basically allows me to um, map my results and display it into different fields. So I've got a job title field. Let me go into the UI real quick just to show you how it looks. So. So I've got a search control in here. I've got, uh, it's, uh, it's not the collapsible set. It is 
a list. So I'm using a list control here. I've got a label here for the job title, and then I've got two hidden fields that store the job ID and the status. Um, and then I have a click event on here that when they click on it, So when I click on it, it sets a storage variable that has a job ID, um, and then and then I'm just setting the text on that. Uh, and then from there, it actually navigates to a different page um, to display the applicant list. So I know this is a little overwhelming, but it's uh, coming from a development background. This is shockingly easier than what it used to be. This is this is literally, you know, thousands of lines of code back in the old days where now it's kind of drag and drop. So as far as say video uploads, things mm -hmm. like that, does that yes. does this do that code itself? It does not do the code. What it does is it supports the phone gap framework. Okay. Yeah. So anything that's available in phone gap you can use. So what I had to do to support video was it it runs video native, so if you have an MP4 file, you can actually map it to it and just drag and drop the file name. Um, if for to save the video, I had to create, I want to say about 20 lines of code to get it to save, which it took me, it took me about two days of research to get it to work between not only getting the video to operate on it, but also the events that say send the video to your PHP site and to get the PHP site to actually save it successfully as well. So it took a few days to get it to work, but now that I know how to do it, um, but I found everything that I needed just by searching. So um, it, was, uh, it was pretty cool. So, so other questions before I... So this app has been in development for since about June, you said? The website part of the app has been developed since June, uh, or they started development in June, and then um, basically um, I built this piece of the mobile functionality within five days. So I've got about five days left of work on it, but uh, yeah, it's shockingly, shockingly easy. So that's this is my this is my love, 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 oh my God tool. Um, and then if you want somebody to build. A proper mobile app. It'll actually generate the, so the source code for you. So you can probably get about 60% of the way here if you want to do something, mm -hmm. you know, Uberish or something like that. So. The other question I have is does this interface with any like Photoshop or things like that, does it have a connection in any way to you Photoshop? Can, you can, it doesn't connect to Photoshop. If you've got JavaScript APIs, mm -hmm. it supports anything that JavaScript supports. So if you can, they've got this thing called plugins. So if you can use JavaScript and APIs and things like that, then you can yeah, get it. Yeah, because I'm using Envision app. Uh -huh. and it would be cool to see something that would integrate where you take that and, and just like load it in. Uh, uh, cool. it, that's not going to work in yeah. this. So. They need to create a, an extension for Photoshop. Uh, that would be cool. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, so here's kind of the design process that I follow. So first, I draw it out because uh, it's easy to think through and it's easy to change. Um, I look for plugins that support what I need to do. So instead of paying somebody or building code to do video, I found a plugin that does it that's going to work for me. Um, so basically, long story short, don't code something if you don't have to because it takes a long time and it hurts your head. Um, coding, yes, you can do it. It's not that hard. Um, if you're really scared, it's easy to find folks on Elance. And then basically test it and test it again and test it again and again. Uh, some gotchas in terms of appery.io. So I have lost a couple hours of work few times, so they're not 100%, but, you know, that devil is better than, I'd rather redo my work than to try to figure out how to iOS and Android build stuff. Um, uh, one of the things that I learned the hard way is about 5 to 10% of the time, 
the build just magically fails and it gives you a weird key error. So, but if you do it again, it works. So there's something weird about their compiling process. Their training is okay, but their support is, it's, it's okay, but their support is excellent. They don't tell you you have to generate four keys and give push notifications to work. They say, go look at the Apple documentation and have fun with that. WordPress gotchas, uh, hard to test a plugin before you're invested in it. So you start setting stuff up and then it's like, oh crap, this isn't going to work because you're 80% down the road. Um, look for reviews and how often a plugin has been updated because uh, you know sometimes people just toss stuff out there and don't ever touch it again and it's buggy and bad. Uh, find templates and updates that have frequent updates and then support and training is pretty non-existent for free stuff. There's a few exceptions like the, the um, pods plugin actually has pretty decent support and that's pretty but uh, you know. Um, caveats, so the don't sue me slide, uh, free plugins might have security holes. So if you're building a HIPAA compliant application or security application, this probably isn't the way you want to go. Um, <laughs> Shared hosting only supports so much, so sometimes it's slow, so just be aware of that. Um, uh, Appery.io uses the phone app framework, so sometimes what that means is it doesn't always work 100% across all the browsers. So the advantage is that it generates source code for both iOS and Android, but what that means is, you know, I've had situations where I try to open up a browser window, works great in Android. Um, in iOS, it's app opening within the app, which what I was doing was a Facebook like. And if you're not logged in, they have to log in. And then if they don't do that, you can't. They can't get back to your app. So, mm -hmm. and then I find after a couple of hours of research, I find out oh, it's a it's a phone gap. So, so sometimes there's some funky stuff like that. So, AKA like was removed from the application. But, um, and then. Um, Sometimes it often takes longer than what you think to do simple things. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to upload a video. That will take a few hours. And then three days later, it's fine again. <laughs> um, so here's kind of your journey in meme form as you go around. Um, let's see. All right. So yay. OK, I'm coding. Yay, stuff is working. It's easy to drag and drop. Oh, wait, it's not working. Oh, shoot, I messed something up. Crap. Why is it working that way? And then, oh my god, it's working, and then, yay, mm -hmm. I'm submitting it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, repeat that a few more times. <laughs> the FU one goes in around the board, especially when your stuff from two hours ago gets a little bit too good. So, who's ready to build something? All right. All right. Yay. All right, so just a little about me. This is stuff that I sell, so. Um, I do software consulting services in terms of uh, design and offshore development. I do training, so I do technology training. I have a $300 software startup class where I cover all of the source code to do all this magic. Um, I also do sales training, so I'm a Brian Tracy certified sales trainer. And then I have an awesome uh, hiring application that does phone screening today, and I'm working on the video screening. And then I also have Learnos, which is a mobile e-learning solution. So if you need mobile e-learning for your phone, I've got a solution for you. I think, uh, so if you want uh, the slides, you can text your email address to that, and I'll send you an email later. Um, and if you want the book as well, I'll also send you that. Um, and then any uh, questions? You can't see the number? Oh, it's 855-980-0522. Or I have business cards if you want to do it the old school way. So. All right, go ahead. Um, what do you like so much about Infusionsoft? What are some alternatives? Um, so your alter what I like about Infusionsoft is it handles my e-commerce. So I can spin up a product at any price point, I can create discounts, I can test different products. Um, and it takes five minutes to set up. I don't have to handle the e-commerce side, I don't have to handle any recurring billing. So it does that for me. Um, and I don't have to store the credit card information because it integrates with my 
um, it integrates with my uh, payment provider. So from the e-commerce side, it was either do I build a recurring billing platform, custom developed, or do I go implement something? It does email automation where you can actually send campaigns so you can send people information. Uh, so when you guys subscribe to this, I'll send you a couple emails that will say, okay, here's here's the slides, here's the um, here's, uh, here's my book to download and things like that. Um, it does. It has an affiliate module in it, so I can enroll people as affiliates and give them a specific percentage of the product if they sell it, and I can track it. Um, and it does. It's a CRM, so I can basically store information. So I like it. I think it's a business automation tool in addition to a CRM solution. Um, but uh, yeah. but it's but a caveat. It's expensive. The training is all over the place and it's hard to learn. So I've been in technology for 18 years. It was hard for me to learn, but now that I've got it, now that I've invested the time, it's just dragging and dropping, and double clicking, creating campaigns and all that stuff. So. And alternatives? Um, what I would do as a, I mean, Salesforce has an alternative. Um, I, if I were doing this lean style, I'd just use Zapier and start saving data into a table and then I generate an email through Zapier once and once the record's created in that table. So, so that would be your other alternative. So it'll take a little bit longer to set up, but it'll definitely it'll definitely work, and it's fifteen dollars a month. So. All right. Thank you.